Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to one more game of second match between Akiba Rubinstein and Gersh Salve. So they wanted to determine who is better a player um, in a Wood Chess Club. And uh, as we know, uh, Rubinstein uh, was uh, slightly better, five and a half to four and a half. That was the score. But I'm going to show you today one more game from that match. Um, there were 10 games, but uh, we're going to cover only two mo most interesting games. And this game I'm going to show you because there is quite interesting um, combination at the end. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's jump into the game and warm welcome uh, for both uh, players. Akiba Rubinstein plays white and uh, Gersh Salve plays black. So let's see how everything happened. d4, d5, c4, e6. So Queen's Gambit declined again. Knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5, bishop e7, knight f3 and a6. a6 is um, one of the moves. Um, Queen's Gambit decline is, you know, uh, very, very popular. 100 years ago, it was also very popular. So, uh, yeah, very solid opening, um, especially, you know, between the uh, top players. Uh, but it's recommended, of course, for everybody, as you're not going to have much surprises in the opening. Uh, e3 by Rubinstein and here very early D takes on C4 and it led Rubinstein to go with te tempo on uh, C4 takes by bishop and usually black waits for for that move because then uh, because then white have to take you know two moves uh, to um, develop the light square bishop. Uh, but uh, Salve decided to do it uh, before uh, and now he can uh, go b5 with tempo. And here Rubinstein play bishop on b3, which um, it's not really great place for this bishop. Usually uh, white retreat on d3 uh, with, you know, they can keep an eye on h7, so that's the principle of this um, of this opening. But uh, Rubinstein move on b3. We have bishop on b7, queen e2, uh, knight b on d7, rook d1, strengthening um, the center and showing the plans of maybe moving this um, this pawn ahead. We will see. Knight e4 played by Salve and we have discovered attack on this bishop so um, white actually can play a couple of moves can exchange first on uh, e7 uh, Rubinstein decide uh, knight takes on e4 we have bishop on e4 and still this bishop is hanging because it's uh, it's attacked twice actually by queen and by the bishop so uh, white has to do something about that um, one of the answers would be uh, bishop takes on e7 or as was played in the game a bishop on f4 but uh, interesting answer by white would be d5 and d5 actually um, after exchanging some pieces on d5 the bishop would be uh, defended by the rook after c6 just exchange on e7 and move the rook to d2 and everything is fine both players uh, you know play their, their game and um, yeah it's pretty equal position and you would probably ask this bishop it can be taken or can't so actually it can be taken and it's quite interesting bishop takes on a g5 we would have d takes on e6 now and now look this uh, knight is under attack and also it's pinned so um, pawn takes on e6 bishop takes on e6 and this knight is still attacked and it actually can't be defended. Uh, so very strong position for, uh, for white. If you want to defend, for example, this way, 
queen c2 attacking that bishop which can't be defended can you believe that it's like a lot of pieces around but it can't be actually defended so uh this bishop would have to you know take on f3 uh g takes on f3 and uh, nothing can save this knight so queen e7 maybe um bishop takes on d7 with check kings go on um f7 queen f5 check bishop take goes on f uh, uh, f6 and now a pretty nice combination uh can be done by white bishop on e6 and uh, this is like pretty pretty nice uh pattern you can remember um sometimes uh it's happened in the games if queen takes just rooks go on d7 with check and uh, this queen gonna fall so it has to fall of course for the price of the rook and um, and yeah uh, white stands much better here uh, because uh, queen and rook against two rooks and the bishop should easily win so this d5 would be pretty interesting it leads to uh, equal game but it's also some trap for black so black should be very careful uh, however as I show you uh, bishop goes on f4 uh, we have um, but yeah this is the thing that um, Rubinstein let Salve play bishop on b4 with check so uh, white have to do something with the king so rubinstein go to f1 we have uh, kingside castle by black and now knight on e5 knight takes on e5 uh, pawn takes on e5 with attack on the queen and now queen e7 just moving from that way we have f3 so kicking out the bishop bishop go to b7 king f2 so uh king is uh, safe right now and now uh black has uh, some advantage on the queen side because black has actually three pawns against two pawns uh, and it's always easier to you know get the advantage on the queen side where the the kings are not around little advantage not much but also the bishop are, are quite uh, you know uh, in great position black also can you know play quite strong attack or at least can try c5 by black we have bishop on c2 so not waiting for uh, c4 uh, but salve anyway play c4 and now quite slow move um in this position probably white could play a uh, move like h4 so this queen wouldn't um, have possibility to come um, on the king side uh, but rubinstein decided for uh, bishop on b1 of course with some plan uh, not very you know complicated uh, plan or, or or anything but uh, but yeah that's um, the move uh, on purpose so we have a bishop on c5 um, moving to making this bishop um, powerful on these diagonals queen c2 so attacking on h7 but, but as you see that's pretty simple uh, attack we have queen on h4 so as i said if the um, pawn is on h4 that uh, queen couldn't come um, to 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 defend uh, now queen defends h7 we have bishop on g3 so defending queen h5 and now rubinstein tried to infiltrate the enemy territory and play rook on d7 uh, however it's not uh, you know really uh, difficult to to counter that we have bishop on c6 rook c7 and rook from a on c8 so uh, everything is protected and white doesn't have much choice have to exchange this traveler rook 
and uh, now Rubinstein play h4 we have queen on h6 so something starting to go on you know this um, pawn on e3 is under very strong pressure uh, Rubinstein uh, prob probably good move would be moving rook on e1 uh, more solid Rubinstein decided to defend with queen and uh, okay queen I think should get some some different tasks some more aggressive task than defending the the pawn uh, but let's see what happened in the game Salve play bishop on b6 and now Rubinstein play actually it's a blunder uh, I don't know uh, I try to figure out what's what's the idea behind this move but Rubinstein uh, in this position should play probably rook d1 and uh, trying to exploit something maybe eight rank weaknesses or uh, or some attacking chances also could move the the queen from the d uh, file but uh, let's say g6 and queen e2 and that would be like pretty okay um, still very difficult position for white but uh, maybe maybe would have some drawing chances but after h5 that's a blunder and uh, I was trying to find why Rubinstein play h5 and all I could find it's if if Salve play some really slow move let's, let's say he play a5 and don't care about anything uh, then Rubinstein could play rook on h4 another so too tempy, too tempy. Another slow move, um, you know, b4, and now uh, White could take to try to uh, get the win the the queen, which would be trapped here. Uh, g5 is the only answer, and after exchanging on g5, uh, rook goes on g4 and exchanging uh, queen for. A light piece and the rook so of course white would stand uh, much better but it's unbelievable that Rubinstein could calculate that I think I think it's pretty naive to 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 do that so uh, now I'm gonna flip the board and uh, feel free to pause the video and win against uh, Rubinstein in nice style why I enjoy my cup of tea. <sighs> Ready? Okay, it should be pretty exciting as you're gonna uh, win with uh, Rubinstein in pretty nice style. So uh, the move Salve found was Rook on d8 and that's the winning combination. Uh, now white has a problem with e3 it has to be defended definitely so there are two defenders and one of the defenders is just attacked right now and of course the rook is protected so this queen should move somewhere while still defending e3 so there are only three possibilities and doesn't really matter which one uh, white would play uh, Rubinstein choose a queen on e1 and now it's the point that black actually can takes with with queen uh, but Salve takes with um, bishop so bishop on e3 check and now you should see already queen takes on e3 and now it's the most important move Rook goes on d2. Pretty nice pattern. I show you that pattern already today. Uh, as maybe Rubinstein had the possibility to, to use that. But that actually happened from Salve's side. And White can't do anything about that. If if the king is moved, then uh, Black gonna take the queen for free. So um, Rubinstein took the rook on d2 we have queen takes on d2 with check 
uh, kings go on g1 and queen goes on b2, takes the pawn, and in this position, Akiba Rubinstein resigned the game. Unbelievable what just happened. Uh, but yeah, and why he resigned? Um, definitely uh, nothing to do. White pieces are totally uncoordinated and uh, this bishop gonna be taken. If uh, white try to save that bishop, then gonna be exchanged and queen uh, will just take um, a2 pawn and march these pawns you know to promotion nothing can stop them if if white try anything like uh, act i mean not active but try to hide the king uh, then black would just take on uh, f3 and uh, and yeah white has to defend so this rook would be totally passive and same story black just you know go to the promotion and win the game so yeah that's being said, uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.